Good morning. Welcome to our service this morning at St. James West. We thank you for tuning in to worship with us, to hear God's word brought to us. And we pray and hope that you are all doing well as we are all walking through this uh, troubled times of self-quarantining and trying to make it together as one. We ask that you just invite your heart to join with us in worship as we lift our voices to our King. of be glad and rejoice before God. May they be happy and joyful. Sing to God. Sing praise to his name. Exalt him who rides on the clouds. His name is the Lord and rejoice before him. He is a father to the fatherless, a defender of the weak. God is in his holy dwelling place.
Good morning. Good morning, as always. It is great to be together, even though we are separated in distance, we are together in spirit. And, and I praise God for our praise band, for their willingness to come in and work together. They are doing their best to maintain their six feet of separation, and yet they are working together to lead us in worship, and I praise God for that. As we come together today, two weeks before Easter, during the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic, I want to remind all of us, myself included, that God is still on the throne, and we, we praise our awesome God. And we find strength and encouragement from the Word of God. And I'd like to read something I, I, I read this week from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. Actually, verses 8 and 9. The Apostle Paul, in writing this letter, he's at the end of his life. He is actually in prison for the gospel. And in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. The Apostle Paul, in writing to his young protege, Timothy, Paul writes, Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, descendant of David, for which I suffer hardship, even to imprisonment as a criminal. But the word of God is not imprisoned. And I find comfort in that. Even though Paul was in prison for preaching the gospel, he says the word of God is not in prison. The word of God continues to spread. And, and that's what we're experiencing during this time. As St. James West, along with many other churches, as we have been forced to, to grow and expand our ability to share the word of God, and as we have gone out, uh, now through Facebook and YouTube and, and every way that we can to share the word of God, even though we are in a, in a state of quarantine, the word of God is not quarantined. And, and, and I, I praise our God for that. And as you're sitting at home this morning, probably eating breakfast, I, I, I thank you for joining us in worship this morning. And, you know, thinking about how the word of God is not imprisoned. In, in the early church, it, I find it interesting that in the early church, the gospel spread from Jerusalem all the way to Rome in a matter of 30 years. Now, for us today, we would say no big deal. But for 2,000 years ago, for the gospel to spread from Jerusalem all the way to Rome in 30 years is miraculous. How did the word of God spread that fast? And ladies and gentlemen, we are living in a time period right now where thanks to the internet, the word of God is, is exploding across the internet. And people are hearing the word of God that have never heard the word of God before. And, and, and I, I praise him for that. In 1995, Hollywood put out a movie entitled Outbreak. And this movie starred Dustin Hoffman and Rene Rousseau, and it was about a monkey who was infected with a virulent form of Ebola. And this the movie was entitled Outbreak. And this monkey infected with Ebola somehow came into contact with this young man, and he scratched that young man. And that young man later that day went to a cinema and he watched a movie and he sneezed. And within 72 hours, the entire country, the entire United States within 72 hours was infected with Ebola. And ladies and gentlemen, so what we're going through today it's been thought of before. It's been imagined before. It, 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 it's happened before. The only thing different right now is the speed in which it is spreading throughout the world. But think about this movie, Outbreak, 1995, Dustin Hoffman, and how Ebola spread. 
across the country in 72 hours. What if the word of God spread in the same way? In Acts 1, 8, Jesus said, And you shall receive power when you receive the Holy Spirit, that you shall be my witnesses in Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost ends of the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, we have received that power to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Think of Jesus as a carrier of the good news. And we have an opportunity through all of the technology that we have nowadays, we have the opportunity to take that good news of Jesus Christ and for it to spread quicker and farther than it has ever spread before. And I, I praise God for that. And by the way, as you're sitting at home eating your breakfast, I, I, hope, I hope that you have an extra biscuit and gravy and piece of sausage for me as, <laughs> as, as I'm missing out this morning. No pie? <laughs> In Mark chapter 1, I, I, I'd like to read just a short section of scripture from Mark chapter 1, starting with verse 35. I think there are, there are several things from this scripture that we can learn from and we, 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 can, we can learn so much from just a few, few short verses. The Gospel of Mark chapter 1, starting with verse 35. It says, in the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went away to a secluded place and was praying there. And Simon and his companions searched for him. And they found him and they said to him, everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, let us go somewhere else to the towns nearby so that I may preach there also, for that is what I came for. And he went to their, into their synagogues throughout all of Galilee, preaching and casting out demons. And a leper came to Jesus, beseeching him, and falling on his knees before him, saying, If you are willing, you can make me clean. And moved with compassion, Jesus stretched out his hand, and he touched him, and he said, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately, the leprosy left him, and he was cleansed. And as, I look, as I look at this, this, par, this story, it's, it's not a parable, it's an actual story. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, starting with verse 35, we find, we, we find several things here. First of all, we find that Jesus, early in the morning, went out by himself and he prayed. And I suggest that for all of us, that we begin our day with a time of prayer, that we begin our day praying. You say, well, I don't know what I can do during this time period. We can pray. We can pray. We can lift up our brothers and sisters to the Lord. We can pray for our city. We can pray for our state, our country, our world. We can pray for those in our immediate family. We can pray for those that are impacted. We can pray for our health care professionals who are dealing with, with this pandemic on, on a daily basis. We can lift them up in prayer. Number two, we can care. You, you, you notice in, in verse 41, it says, moved with compassion, Jesus stretched out his hand and he touched the leper. Jesus had compassion upon this man. Jesus cared for this man. We too can care for those that we come into contact with. Uh, in AD 249 until the year 262, A.D. 249 to 262, almost all of the Western civilization was, was devastated by a pandemic. Did you realize that almost 2,000 years ago they had a pandemic? 
and it devastated the Western civilization. In fact, in Rome, they were experiencing 5,000 deaths a day at the height of this pandemic. 5,000 deaths a day. And what I find interesting about that is Bishop Dionysus of Alexandria. He said, you know, as, as, as I watch people, and, and this pandemic is killing Christians, non-Christians, didn't matter. And he said, but as I watch people, people are dying in the streets. People are, are falling over in the streets ill. And as I watch people, there's a difference between the Christians and the non-Christians. He said, I can tell when someone is a Christian by the compassion that they have for those that are falling ill, for those that have died. I can tell the Christians by their care and their compassion. And so I'm suggesting to us, let's stand out. Let's stand out. To be holy means to be separate, to be set apart. And so during this pandemic that we are experiencing, let, let's stand out. Let's be different. Let, let's be like Jesus and have compassion on people. And as, as we think about that, uh, one way that we can do that is we can be, we can have peace. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers. And so ladies and gentlemen, let, let's be a peacemaker. Secondly, let's be an encourager. Let's be an encourager. In 1 Thessalonians 5.11, it says, encourage one another. And ladies and gentlemen, there's all kinds of ways that we can encourage one another. I know that some of you have encouraged me before by bringing a pie to church and placing it on the front pew. And I find that encouraging. We can't do that anymore. But there are other ways that we can encourage one another. We can call one another. We can pick up our phone and we can call people. And I know that some of you are doing that. And I praise God for that. Let's encourage one. Let's pick up our phone and call someone and say, hey, thinking about you, is there anything I can do for you? We can text people. We can send a text. Say, hey, I'm thinking about you and I'm praying for you. We can send cards. The, the postal service is still running. In fact, this last week, just a couple days ago, Susie and I got a card in the mail, and I'm going to share it with you this morning. And it is a picture of a bunny rabbit. And it says, some bunny loves you. And it was addressed to Susie and I. And it says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you, John 15, 12. And it says, Jean and Susie, you are very much loved by God your St. James West family, and by Lori, Sophie, and Garrett. It's a homemade card. They didn't spend any money on it other than, other, other than the postage. But they, they made this card for Susie and I. And they mailed it. And it's touched both of us. Ladies and gentlemen, we can care for each other in so many different ways. We can pray for each other. We can encourage each other. We can text. We can call. We can send notes of encouragement. We can be the body of Christ during this time period. And, and, and I encourage you to do that. I, I, I'm encouraging myself. I, I need to do more of that. To spend more time during the day encouraging you. And, and yeah, even though I'm praying for you, you may not know it. I need to let you know that I'm praying for you. And I encourage you to do likewise. Think about, just, just open your mind up. Just begin to pray and say, God, who is it today that, that, that needs a little bit? Who is it today that you would like me to do something for? And whoever pops into your mind, give them a call, send them a card. Just love on them a little bit. So that we as, as Christians who are called to be holy, to be set apart, to be different, may stand out as those that are loving. The third thing that we can do, 
if we can share the good news. In, in Mark 1, verse 38, it, Jesus said, let us go somewhere else to the towns nearby so that I may preach there also, for that is what I came for. Jesus had been in Capernaum. He'd been to Simon Peter and his mother-in-law's house, and he had healed Simon Peter's mother-in-law, and the disciples assumed they were going to stay right there and continue to heal people. And Jesus said, no, let's, let's go someplace else. I've shared the good news here in Capernaum, Let's go to this town. Let's go to this town. Let's go to this town. Let's share the good news. And ladies and gentlemen, we have that privilege and that opportunity today to be able to share the good news. Don Cousins. Some of you might say, I've never heard of Don Cousins. He is the father of Kirk Cousins, who's the quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings, well, Kirk Cousins' father, Don Cousins, is a pastor in Florida. And I, I, I heard on, on, um, uh, on the internet the other day, I, I was watching a 30-minute program that aired, and Don Cousins was interviewed, and Don Cousins uh, ma made a comment that has really st stuck with me. He said, you know, right now we are going through this pandemic where... So many people have been infected by COVID-19. And he said the death rate, which we all know from the CDC, the death rate for those that are who actually come down with COVID-19 is one in a hundred. And Don Cousin said, you know, there's actually another infectious disease that 100% of people have 100 everybody has this particular disease and this disease is called sin Romans 3 23 says for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God so ladies and gentlemen every one of us has this disease called sin and what we know about COVID-19 one in a hundred will die with sin, it's 100%. Everyone who is infected with sin will die. Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death. So we can compare COVID-19 with one in 100, and we can compare sin, which we all have, which is 100%. But the good news, and we always need to share the good news with it. That's what gospel, one of the things that gospel means is the good news. The good news of Jesus Christ is there is a cure. Now, I know that the scientists are frantically working on a cure for COVID-19. But the good news is the disease of sin, there is a cure. And just as the fatality of sin is 100%, the cure for sin is 100%. Romans 6.23, I'm sure many of you, you know that, but I, I want to read it to you word for word from Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, we're all infected. And we all have access to the cure. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And so as, as we live out during these days, let's be people that pray. Let's be people that care. And by the way, Laurie and Sophie and and Garrett, I thank you. I thank you. You've shared. You've cared. And it's touched Susie and I. And I thank you. Let's be people that care. Let's be people that share. You say, well, I'm not very good at sharing the good news. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no better time than right now to be able to share the good news. Because people are open. People are questioning. 
And it is so easy to enter into a conversation with someone during this time period and to be able to share the good news that there is a 100% cure for the disease that all of us have. Will you pray with me? Father God, as we come before you this day, Father, I thank you. I thank you that as we study your word, Father, we understand that there are those that have been in prison like the Apostle Paul for sharing the gospel. And yet the Apostle Paul said the gospel, the good news is not in prison. And Father, I thank you for that. And Lord, I pray that as the body of Christ, that we might be a people that are set apart, that we are a people that, that are different. I pray that people can look at us and say there's something different about them because we are peacemakers, Father. You have, in, in John 14, Jesus said, I have given you my peace. And Father, I thank you for that peace. May we have peace during this time. And Father, may, may we understand, may we understand that you have given us a 100% cure for the most deadly disease that there is. And Father, may we share that cure with everyone that we come into contact with. We praise you and honor you this day, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Know that you are not alone if you are lonely. Know that when you feel afraid, you are not the only one. We are all the same, each one of us, in need of mercy and grace to be forgiven and be free. But thank God he is all that we need.
As we close out with prayer today, I thank you for joining us in worship. A couple of announcements. I want to remind everyone that even though the office is officially closed and the church is the church building is closed, I am coming into the church office every day and checking messages and and bringing in the mail. And if you would like to uh, contact myself, you can always call me personally on my t cell phone or you can call the church office and I will return those messages. You can also uh, send in through the U.S. mail. Uh, we are collecting the mail every day. And if you would like to send in your tithes and offering, you can certainly do that through the U.S. mail. Uh, you can take a chance and, and stop by, and I, I may be here. Uh, but you're certainly welcome to do that. Please love on one another. Share with one another. Take care of one another. Think about others in our church that, that might need a little bit, and, and give them a call and just love on them a little bit. Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen.